Yo, what's up? My name's Petrowski, and today I wanted to make a Pokemon PvP video finally showing off a really weird Pokemon that I have in my collection. <clears throat> so, this is going to be a trick room here today in NU. So, I have this Blossom that is shiny, first of all, which is incredible. Some really nice stats overall, but it's low speed, which isn't too bad for Blossom because it can be played in Trick Room at a 50 base stat speed, plus Sassy Nature, which lowers the speed, which makes it even better in Trick Room, but it's a Quiver Dance Blossom. And what Quiver Dance does is it raises your speed stat. So there's going to be a little bit of anti-synergy here, but at the same time, being able to get that first Quiver Dance up and uh, raising your defenses and everything in, in Trick Room is still not bad. And I still might not be fast enough to uh, get hurt by certain things like Ninjast, for example. Plus, once Trick Room wears off, Quiver Dance allows me to still be a threat. So I'm really interested to see how this is going to work. Now, I've already played two battles with this team. Um, like a month ago, I want to say, and I'm going to be commentating over those post commentary after this game. This is going to be my only live game of this session of this set. Now, I want to make sure I pilot this correctly. I haven't played this team too much, or especially not in a very long time. I think I want to go Ambipom lead here. He's on Ambipom as well. If he's beat up Ambipom, my Trick Room setters are going to have a really tough time. So I'm going to go ahead and lead my Ambipom. I do have Behem and Claydol on my side of the field to go ahead and set up Trick Room. So he's probably going to go for Stealth Rocks here. So I could actually be... I'm going to go ahead and just fake out. I mean, first things first. And just kind of check to see if he switches. And then also check to see. So Shiny Frostlass comes in. Cool Shiny, by the way. Um, I can freely beat up here. He does not expect me to have beat up. Not many people run beat up Ambipom. Let's go ahead and see the damage. This should one-shot. Yup, there we go. Not many people expect a beat up on Amapom. There we go. Beat up is fantastic because it takes out Frostlass and it takes out Rotom. Rotom is, you know, I think now the most played Pokemon in all of NU, which is crazy. Uh, let's go ahead and go check it out. Yeah, Rotom is now, wow, even, wow, handedly too, at a 34% usage rate for 20%. I guess the season must have just reset though. There's not that many games, but that is crazy. That is, that is crazy how much it's it's ahead of the pack right now. So his Ampom comes in. Uh, I'm worried about a fake out here, obviously. Uh, I think I just go ahead and head over to Golbat and sort of roost it off. And I should be able to tank anything he throws out. Um, I should be able to roost roost anything off as well as um, or Patoxic or something if I get the opportunity. It's going to be like 30 damage. Yep, 50, 50 damage. I'll take it. His is Life Orb as well. Um, now the question is if I want to go for, I think I'm going to go ahead and roost here because I assume, yeah. So it's a little, I could have gone for a toxic here, but he goes into Magneton, so it's good for me to roost here. I could have also gone for a hard switch if I was super risky. Now what I'm going to do here is I think I'm finally going to make the switch into my Claydol. Yes. So if he vaults, obviously vault switch is the easy play here. He might forget that Claydol is a ground type, which a lot of people forget. So he might not think about that. Or he'll make a prediction play. Great play by him. I was going to say, I'm a little scared of Flash Cannon, but at the same time, I'm okay with it. At the same time, I'm going to be able to set up a light screen here. Hopefully get off a trick room and then be able to uh, answer this thing. Servine comes in. I don't know. Is this contrary Servine? Is that the, is that possible? I have not seen this thing. I'm really interested in this. I'm going to go ahead and immediately trick room. Knock off. I don't know what this Servine does. I love I love seeing a cool Pokemon like that. I don't think this thing gets contrary, does it? That would be so cool. Wow, this is so interesting. I'm going to go ahead and teleport here on his switch. Yep, Golem comes in. So I'm going to go ahead. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I think what I'm going to do... Do I really want to bring in Blossom here? It's a little scary. Not gonna lie. Hmm. I can't bring in Blossom here. I think I can. Even though I'm specially, I guess I'm specially defensive with Sassy, but he sees my shiny as well, which is cool. I'm gonna go ahead and go for a Quiver Nets. I'm a little scared of um. I'm a little scared of. Of of Stealth Rock's fine. That's actually totally fine. What I'm truly scared of, that's actually really good for me. Having that Quiver Dance trade there for the for the Stealth Rock, I'm really happy with that. Now I'm scared of Sturdy, so I'm gonna go ahead and Giga Drain him here. He is probably gonna move before me now. Since I oh just I'm still slower. Wow, so he must be 252 speed. He's fast golem, 100 percent He's gonna he's gonna maintain. Wow, that rock blast dodge is huge. Now is he Custap? Is a huge question here. 
Uh, I think I want to go ahead and go for a sludge bomb. Expecting any if if yeah, so explosion here shouldn't okay, rock blast, perfect. I was about to say, this cussed out berry still shouldn't kill me or anything, so I should be fine. Okay. And now Trick Room should be wearing out here in a quick sec. Really soon, I want to say. Yeah, look at that. Look how well that worked out. We got one quiver dance up. We're still very healthy. He's gonna come in and go for a fake out, obviously. I'm okay to tank that, I believe. 40%. Pretty brutal, and he's gonna be faster. Ah, uh, my Blossom's probably dead here. Do I want to make a switch play here is the question. My Blossom's definitely slower here. But does he know that? Does he really think I'm sassy? Like, does he know I'm still slower? I mean, he should because he saw the Golem play. The correct play here would be to probably switch out, but... Honestly, the issue is my Blossom does nothing against his team. It can Sludge Bomb Servine, but that's pretty much it. Other than that, my Blossom is pretty hard walled by his team. Um, I'm gonna go for a good drain here. Quick attack. Takes me out. Yep, fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. Well played. I'm kind of just sacrificed my Blossom there. That's okay. It still it still did its job. It took rid of a took out a Golem, survived an attack. Still was really, really threatening. I'm still super, super happy with how all of that played out. Now, the question is, do I want to bring in my Golbat now and get rid of Spikes? Or Rocked, excuse me. Or just bring in my... I think I just bring in my Ambipom here. Like always. I think I always bring an Ambipom here and go for the... um the fake out into the u-turn because i assume he's gonna go magneton here yep super obvious play there even so i haven't seen an item on this thing yet i'm gonna u-turn out now he's probably is it flash cannon again perhaps you don't want to i think i just go clay all here again funnily enough i avoid stealth rocks damage due to levitate which is nice just kidding. I don't know why I thought that was a mechanic. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm probably... Am I faster here? I forgot if I was faster last time. If not, I'm still happy sacrificing this here. He's faster. So I sacrificed that. He's probably Choice Scarf would be my, my guess then. I don't think of what I can bring in here. I wonder if he's locked into a move. If he's Choice Scarf... Was he locked into a move last time? I don't remember. I feel like he might be locked in. I feel like he might... He's either Eviolite or Scarf. And it's always... It's a little tough to tell what. Um... This thing does not have levitate, correct? I always forget whether this line has levitate. Magnet pull and sturdy. Okay. Question is, how do I want to play this? I really want to... If, if he's locked in, Golbat here is so good to be able to come in into fog. The issue is, if he's not locked in, it's really scary. So I could be making a huge mistake here. I'm fast. If, if he just vault switch here, it's really bad for me. Yep, okay. That's pretty bad, but at least we get information. That's pretty bad. That was a pretty greedy play by me. I mean, it might lose me the game here. He gets a crit, but it, like even if he didn't kill with that crit, I still des I deserve that crit, if that makes sense, because I made a huge mistake. Like, even if he doesn't kill with that crit, I, I made a huge mistake there. Yeah, I deserve to uh I deserve to get punished with that crit. That's okay. I'm gonna bring my own ammo palm in. Go for the fake out play. Switches, it's fine. Magneton comes in. That's fine. I could have hard switch. I want to be able to bring in my Behem here. I need to be able to bring in my Behem. I want to be able to bring it in healthy, though. I'm trying to think if my Ambipom does anything left in this game, or if I should just go ahead and Tail Slap. I think I still need my Ambipom. I think U-Turn is going to be good against Servine. Fake Out is going to be good against his opposing Ambipom, especially since he's Life Orb. I really want to keep my Behem healthy here. Maybe that's the only way I win. But I think I have to bring it in on the flash cannon. Oh my god, that did a lot more damage than I expected. 40? Was that another crit? No way, that was a lot of damage. Wow, I'm really surprised at how much damage that did. I'm not going to lie. Ninjas comes in. This thing's going to be way, way faster. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up a trick room here. I might, it's possible I live in attack here, but I don't think so. Yep, just freely U-turns. Takes me out. That's unfortunate. That's probably GG's. I think I really threw the late game. I think me and my opponent were on pretty equal footing for a large part of the, the first part. Um, but I think I threw the late game pretty hard here. I think I was too desperate. I probably should have. I probably should have instantly switched in. Uh, be, I, I probably should have sacrificed my Ambipom perhaps. And been able to bring in Behem at full HP. I just need to set up Trick Room here. And I need to do enough damage to 
yeah, I, I, I just, it's so important. But then I just ended up, I, make, I ended up, like, kind of, um, trying to pick my cake and eat it too or whatever, where I was trying to, uh, just do too many things here. I'm gonna go ahead and just tail slap here. I was just trying to do too many things here. I definitely misplayed a ton here at the end, but that's okay. My opponent deserved a win. Nothing wrong with that. Um, still okay. It's, it's, it's honestly, I will say, this is one of the toughest teams to pilot that I've probably ever played. Having to navigate, Trick Room is already an extremely tough team to pilot. Um, Trick Room and having Golbat, understand when to roost and everything. There's so many things about this team that are super, super difficult to pilot. I'm going to be able to take out his Magneton here, which is nice. He should be able to bring his Ampom here and fake out me, though, which is honestly fine by me. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things here that, like, this is a really, really tough team to pilot, is, is what I'm trying to say, really. Um, it's just really, it's really, really tough. You turn here, fair enough. I guess that's smart. So now you can U-turn and bring an Palm after and get a free fake out. That was a really smart play. Uh, I guess it was Servine. That's fair as well. And my guy is slow. He's honestly not terribly slow. What is Servine's base stat speed? My opponent played this game really well. This is one of the better opponents that I've seen in a really long time, so... Huge shout out to him. Clearly deserves the high rank. Um, but I really want to head smash here. I feel like I need to preserve some HP. If I feel like I don't kill if I don't head smash. I'm gonna head smash. He leaves storms. He does have contrary. That's crazy. I didn't know serve contrary servine was in NU. That is really interesting. I would love to see people start start rocking that. Anyways, GG's to my opponent. That was a pretty. I mean, it was a, it was a great game one. Even though I lost, my opponent played really well. I made some piloting mistakes. That's just how it goes sometimes. Hope you guys stick around for game two and three. I'm sure there'll be a lot more exciting. I know there's some W's in there, in there, and we had some fun games. So I'll see you guys with the commentary. All right, yo, what's up? Welcome back to the post commentary of game number two. So I'm actually gonna be watching this one on 1.5 times playback speed, and I haven't seen this game in a super long time, so I'm gonna be doing my best to commentate over it and just kind of see uh, what I might predict or what I might think that I go, I would go for in this current time. So looking at this team, I look pretty safe to lead in the Claydol. The only thing I am scared of are is um, Exceldor. If he leads Exceldor and goes for like a Bug Buzz. Pretty scary for me leading with the uh, the clay doll. So Amapomp is a little safer. He ends up leading Seismitoad. Looking like a rain team here, pretty obviously. We've got Seismitoad, uh, Swift Swim, Weasel, Mantine, Ludicolo. All these things that just super, super benefit from um, from all that. So he makes a really good switch here into the Hitmon top. Not much I can do about that. I pretty much go for uh, high damage play or, you know, fake out or whatever. So now I can either U-turn here or make a hard switch. I feel like I always... Always oh, U-turn? Unless there's something I'm, I'm not... Oh, Rocky Helmet. I think I just hard switch here over to Claydol just to preserve some Rocky Helmet damage. That chip really ends up mattering over a Amapalm's lifespan. And I don't know if I predicted the fake out there or not. I don't remember if I remember that or not, honestly. But pretty good play. It works out really well for me. So let's just go ahead and say that I called the fake out. There's a good chance that I might have called the fake out. But you know what? You never know. Probably checking something here. I feel like I'm checking uh, Hitmontop's base stat speed or something. Hitmontop's base stat speed is like a weird... I, I, I could check it actually right now in game. I'm not sure what it is, but... Um, what's the play here? Do I set up light screen? I set up reflect first. I'm really surprised I set up reflect here. I feel like that was a bad play. I feel like I should always set up light screen here. I'm just going for double screens, but... Yeah, man. I really, really, really should have set up light screen first there. That was a huge misplay. Like, he only has... Uh, Seismitoad's probably physical. I think Buizel goes physical too, to be fair. So he has like three physical mons, three special mons. I'm really surprised and lucky I lived that bug buzz, but that light screen will also help me live the next bug buzz. So that was actually the perfect amount. This is going to put me in a really good position. I should be able to live this, I believe. Yeah, this is actually going to be a perfect... Like this clay doll, this is this clay doll's job. I want this clay doll to come in, set up double screams, set up trick room, and die or get out or do something to where I'm gonna be able to pop off. So I just hard switch Golbat here because I know I can four times resist the um, the bug buzz coming in, and he actually goes over to hit him on top, uh, which is really good for me. Just to be, I guess he switched just to be an overall defensive wall, maybe get an intimidate proc on something I was bringing in to be an off offensive threat. Maybe the Rampardos is what he thought. Um. Yeah, plus he can fake out here to like stall a trick room turn. So I think that's, I think he thought I was just going to go straight into Rampardo. So I make some plays. I, I switch around. Uh, I bring in Blossom. Blossom takes no damage from that rock slide. Him on top always feels like it does pretty much no damage unless you really, really train it to do damage. Blossom comes in really healthy here in a good position. Trick room turns are wearing out very quickly. I think I'm like three turns in at this point, but that's actually a good thing. 
if you remember this blossom this is quiver dance trick room blossom so i'm gonna start setting up quiver dances get strong and now he's in a really scary position where he's brought in a special attacker to deal with this blossom whereas i'm gonna get strong here really really quickly so i feel like i definitely ran away with this game with blossom if i don't remember correctly it's such a cool pokemon to really pop off with so right here i think it's like the last turn of trick room or, or close to it I've gotten up two Quiver Dances now ahead of that Accelerador because of being in Trick Room. He sets up Rain Dance. I set up another Quiver Dance. I'm three times Quiver Dance up now with Blossom. Things are looking good, looking strong as long as he can't like roar me out. Or if he can't roar me out or get rid of me in some way, he does. I end up going for the fourth Quiver Dance and he just straight up final gambits me. And I feel like a fool because man, did I totally forget about Accelerador's access to final gambit. This was so sad for me final gambit is a move that i don't even run on excelgore when i run excelgore i don't like it i feel i feel like excelgore can carry i feel like i don't know i trust excelgore too much i feel like it can carry its own it's a nice it's a nice oh shit button final gambit but i like having bug buzz i like having giga i like having access to all these things and i think from this point on i might get obliterated here once someone sets up ludicolo in rain it is actually so hard to come back from that in nu nothing outspeeds this thing in nu in rain um it does absurd damage especially with life orb it has the sustain with giga drain i think my goal here was to just roost install for as much as long as possible essentially i could have gone ahead and gone for a uh, like brave bird to kill it off but i really want to keep my goal bat healthy and really want to keep it up if he crits you know what fair enough he got me but even if he crits i think i should be able to live um He's just killing itself from its own life orb, so that's kind of my my position here slash my goal here, keeping my goal bat healthy. I could have yeah, I could have played it a little bit riskier, I guess, and gone for I could have I mean this was the risky play honestly. I could have played it safer and gone for the brave bird play, and not even worried about crit and stuff like that or freeze or whatever. He should have been ice beaming here the entire time. I'm pretty sure and just hoping for freeze. I think Surf might have done a little more damage, but I, I, he switched it up. I feel like you just have to hope for Freeze there and, and spam the Ice Beam. So we do successfully... Dude, Cro Golbat. Golbat is one of the most powerful Pokemon in NU. I swear, man. Being able to roost through all of that and survive all that Ludicolo and stall out the rain and let it kill itself by Life Orb, this put me in a posi position where I was like, okay, maybe I can win this game. Maybe this game is actually winnable. This game literally went from pretty unwinnable to, hey, maybe I have a chance. I'm facing down a rain team with my Grass-type Pokemon gone, unfortunately. That final gambit really just put a wrench into this game for sure. He sets up rain, goes for surf. I just, I poison him. I start roosting back up and this gold bat's going to do its job. Gold bat is so hard to break through. It's, it's really, really crazy. Um, it's, 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 it's really surprising. Um, that Pokemon is really, really strong. Go ahead and go for a defog, blow, blow away the, uh, the stealth rocks he's setting up. I'm just stalling him down, just stalling him down with toxic, with poison doing my job i go for a brave bird because i have the uh, luxury to be able to do that get a free brave bird off on the float so i'm really happy with that do a ton of damage don't even take that much recoil go for another brave bird here which i'm kind of surprised by probably i guess there's no reason not to at this point like i'm, I'm i knew that this thing's probably gonna do a lot of damage i get a crit there that crit would have been really good the turn prior but that's okay uh so now i know that my goal bat's obviously pretty much gone but at the same time he brings in this I'm really surprised by this, but then I realize, oh, it's offensive. You don't see that very often. It's offensive man time. You only see that in rain, and then even so, it's it's kind of surprising in my opinion. So now I bring in the big bat. I love this Behem. One of my favorite trick room Pokemon. People do not respect Behem. People don't realize how much damage this thing does. It just has an insane base special attack set. So I'm able to tank one surf, set up a trick room, and then just I can just side shot to the rest of his team. It's pretty much GG's. Uh, he can bring in Hitmontop here and fake out me, although he doesn't. I don't know if this thing has fake out as well. I don't remember. Um, he could have brought in Hitmontop here and faked out, but at the same time, like... Yeah, Psyshock's going to obliterate this thing, I'm pretty sure. One, like, I show off the uh, the stat. So he sets up Rain, but then just is, is like dead, essentially. I show off the special the special attack stat. Base 125 special attack is no, is no joke. I, I was really, really happy I was able to turn around this game. I feel like... Um, not thinking about Final Gambit really could have lost me this game and could have thrown me this game, but I'm just super lucky I was able to uh, kind of bring it back here. So we used Fake Out here. I should be able to. I should be able to safely bring in Rampardos and just kill it as long as I'm a little scared of close combat here. That's what I'm super scared of here. But Trick Room is still up. I think that's what happened. Uh, and we're able to take him out. There we go. Rampardos cleans it up. 
GG's really close game too. Uh, a lot of fun. A lot of misplays on both sides. A lot of good plays on both sides. Just a really nice back and forth. Uh, Quiver Dance Blossom was still a threat, even though it couldn't do that much damage or, or potential. I mean, it had potential in this game, but it didn't have impact. Um, but that was just, it wasn't really its fault. That was me not thinking about Final Gambit but the, at Celador, and I'll leave that to a piloting issue. That's not uh, the, the Blossom's fault. It was in a really good position there to wreak havoc, so we'll jump into Game 3. All right, here we are in game three on a little bit of a win streak here. I think I won two or three games in a row or something like that. Facing down a very, very meta team here. This is pretty much, I mean, the best team uh, in NU at this time. I think it's no longer this because this was a while ago once again. And what, we get another person who doesn't expect beat up Amapom. I'm telling you guys, man, run beat up Amapom. It's so good. And he, I can't believe he tricked here. I see a lot of people doing this. Probably one of the biggest mistakes that I see in uh, newer players. If you're honestly, if you're a newer player to PvP, don't run a trick Pokemon. I I would highly like. I don't even like running trick Pokemon that much because it's such a, it's such a risk unless you feel really really comfortable on it. Um, he go ahead and tricks a Choice Scarf on my Ampom, which is going to cripple it to some extent, but like not really. Like it stops it from being able to fake out and then go into a U-turn or fake out and do something else like that. But I'm still able to just spam. Like look at this. I'm just beating up my opponent. Look at Ampapom. Look at Ampapom. This video should be about Ampapom. This Pokemon's in, it's still insane. It's still broken. I talk about Ampapom. Look at this. Golem is meant to be a counter to Ampapom, and I'm able to whittle it down to 40% HP. So without even without even having access to Fake Out while being crippled, like that's so insane. Okay, he does set up Stealth Rocks here, which is a little annoying, but it's not too bad against my team. Thankfully, it pretty much only hits Golbat, which is the Defogger on the team. So my team is not very weak to Stealth Rocks, which is a really nice thing. Uh, he goes ahead and goes for a Rapid Spin here. I think expecting me to set up Stealth Rocks of my own. He Rapid Spins again. He's expecting me to set up, set up Stealth Rocks, but I'm just setting up screens, Trick Rooming, and getting out of here. Um, getting the Speed Boost is well was nice until I until I went ahead and um, nah. He was expecting my Claydol to be utility and be a rapid spinner plus stealth rocker that's why he made those moves that he did but i was absolutely not i was a trick room screen setting um sacrificial play it all and that's i think you can't something you can't do in my opinion you cannot there's certain pokemon like clay doll you cannot immediately guess what that pokemon is going to do Play doll has so many different play styles, it's insane. You absolutely cannot just immediately assume, oh, this play doll is gonna like it having rocks, I understand. That's one thing. But to rapid spin twice in a row to try it was a little too greedy. It was a little too greedy predicting what it might be. Um, I just obliterate him here. Look at this. I said I set up one quiver dance in trick room. We're still in trick room here. Uh, I'm able to do it, throw up a Giga Drain, throw up a Sludge Bomb. The Sludge Bomb poisons. I get the exact amount of damage. He takes the exact amount of recoil. Everything was so perfect there to take out his um, his Blaziken. That was super, super lucky. So now I have two plays. I can either um, hope that my Blossom... I, I, I guess I have a couple plays here. I can either hope that I live, which I don't think I... The Fake Out, like, it's it's weird. Um... I'm going to be slower after. I think I just have to switch here. I think I just have to switch Golbat here. I think I know that. Yeah. I know that I have to switch Golbat here. I still need my Blossom. Keeping Blossom at low HP is actually super relevant because in Trick Room, you can throw off those huge Giga Drains um, that, you know, outspeed people even though you're slow or whatever, right? So I bring in Golbat. I go ahead and heal up really quick. He's going to start whittling me down. The Reflect wears off. Now, that's really scary for me. I didn't take enough time to look at that and think of that because you see me realize, like, oh, shit, like, he's doing way more damage with return now but i do get go ahead and get rid of the um the rocks which is which is nice here um it's gonna help blossom be able to come back in i'm thinking here i don't want to play this do i want to i want to just sacrifice my goal bat do i want to sacrifice a different pokemon do i want to uh try to get a toxic off before i go down do i really want to heal up do i really want to try to heal up all the way um and risk the like the crit coming in i think it's how i play it. i just play it really really slow and just keep roosting up goal bat Man, Golbat really is just such a brutal Pokemon to break through in NU. It's it's really, really crazy. He doesn't get a crit here. Super, super lucky so far. I mean, it happens. That I means it's what, 1 out of 16 or whatever? Yeah, that's that's crazy. Return comes in. Now now we're now we're healed up. Now we're healthy. Like, look at that. Like, I feel bad. I Golbat, man, if I could if I could recommend like any new player, like if you're a new player to, to NU and you're trying to build you're struggling to build a team, throw a Golbat in there. It's just an all-around wall that is really going to help you. It's, it's going to give you wins. It's, it's, it's really, really going to, like, it's, no matter what is on it, no matter whether it's Taunt, no matter whether it's, um, 
no matter what what set there's a lot of different sets you can go like taunt you can go u-turn you can go uh my set which is defog roost brave bird um toxic there's, there's a lot of things you can go but it's it's really just golbat's just strong ev like golbat is just so so good the biggest thing to keep in mind when training up a golbat is don't just don't let it evolve that's that's the hardest part of, <laughs> of getting golbat so he brings in for alligator i bring in my uh Bahium. i set up trick room he's got sword stance going i'm really scared of aqua jet here i know that i have to immediately attack it thankfully he does an aqua jet there sets up another sword stance i think i might lose the game here i'm literally sitting here like wow like aqua jet plus um <clears throat> ice punch like i might be dead i'm sitting i'm really sitting here thinking like i might lose this game um i'm really worried that um because i'm i'm like i think at this point <clears throat> i'm sitting here thinking man aqua jet probably kills rampardos it probably kills this is my biggest misplay of the entire game i want to point this out i don't know why i did this horrible horrible play do not do what i just did i brought in my gold bat and just let it get one shot so I think it's because Trick Room is still up there. I thought I would have been, um, I don't know if I thought it was, I don't know, there was some speed. I just, I just thought that, so my reasoning was, I thought that it was my only play because I thought that my Blossom wouldn't live this Aqua Jet and I was wrong. It, it does live the Aqua Jet. Maybe it's a damage roll, um, but I definitely feel like I should have brought in my Rampardos or my Blossom there earlier and just, and just risked it just to see, you know, my, they're both trained 252 HP. Um, obviously, I thought the goalback could really tank it, but it just it just gets by Ice Punch. Yeah, but he he has to go for Aqua Jet against Rampardos or Blossom, so he could you know it's low base power. You kind of have to. I kinda, I, I should have forced that play. Losing my goalback there was just an unbelievably stupid play and just 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 yeah terrible terrible play. Uh, but that's okay. I, I could go ahead and set up one last Trick Room, and I'm really hoping here. <clears throat> I'm setting up this last Trick Room, uh, and you set up Trick Room first here. This is a really really good play. The reason I did it in this order. I set up Trick Room first, so that I knew that I could set up a light screen the next turn. If I set up a light screen there, I would have just died uh, without being able to get up Trick Room. If I set up Reflect, it's not going to help me against Sceptile most likely. I'm scared of this Sceptile Giga Draining. That's my biggest fear here. My biggest fear here is this Sceptile coming in, Giga Draining me, and fucking me up. Uh, so I really want to set up light screen there. That's, it's better than yeah, set up reflect and then trick room, etc., etc. So here I'm I'm so worried. I'm checking its base. I'm checking its base defenses and stuff. I I I really wish I could have EQ'd here. EQ probably would have killed, but I realize I think I have to head smash. It sucks to risk the game on an 80% accuracy move, but I go for it and I do hit it, and that's the GG's. I know that head smash will obviously definitely kill. 150 base power stab. We get the victory. We get the win streak great game i had a lot of fun i might bring back this quiver dance trick room blossom team it's just oh my god it's such a difficult team to pilot it's such a complex like trick room is already really really difficult to play and i like that because usually i mean it, dep it depends there's a lot there's a lot of matches where i'm like man like i was just outpowered like my opponent was playing data meta and i just like couldn't keep up but there are a lot of times in trick room games where like i make so many mistakes and i'm like damn i deserve to lose that i will i would i would rather Put, play a really, really complicated team and make a million mistakes and learn and learn and learn and lose and lose and lose and be able to blame myself and be able to always point fingers at myself as opposed to me getting frustrated and feeling the need to point fingers at uh, either my opponent or RNG, etc., etc. I like being able to blame myself, you know, keeps the control. So that's GG's. That's how it goes sometimes. Uh, we won, I think we went two and one in this session, two and one in the, in the two. Yeah, but we won both of the, uh, the pre-recorded and commentated over which, um, I didn't do like they, they weren't like cherry pit games like these were just like the two games that I played I only, I only played three games with this team so there's a lot of learning to do uh this could be a really cool team to bring back in the future if you guys want to see some more stuff like this let me in the comments down below like this video if you enjoyed it subscribe for future daily Pokemon content I upload two Pokemon pieces of content every single day most active Pokemon content creator on YouTube Twitch etc etc check out the discord link down below if you want to join a really cool community I would love to do a, an event or a video at some point where my discord gives me Pokemon uh to play with like you guys could give me like six times zero sun kern and I'd be like forced to play with that in comp that'd be really fun sometimes see if I could win a single game be a good meme maybe one of you guys will give me like a good aim of palm or something good but it'll be fun appreciate you guys watching have a great day if you want to go above and beyond and support the channel make sure to become a youtube member for five bucks a month drop a twitch prime or a twitch sub over on my twitch or hit up my paypal link down below paypal is the best way to support just because it, they take less of a cut of your guys's money so thank you all so much have a great one i'll see you later keep enjoying pokemon Mo. i'll keep enjoying content creation for it have a great day guys peace hey thanks so much for watching till the end of the video 
And a huge extra special thanks to all those cool duders who go above and beyond and support the channel and allow me to keep making content every day. You guys allow me to do what I do. Thank you so much. Have a good one.